Welcome to this video on loops and specifically we're going to be looking at while loops. A big word for loops is iteration but don't worry about that for now. Now when you have very repetitive tasks, in other words tasks which repeat themselves again and again and again, loops are extremely handy. For instance, say you wanted to print hello a hundred times. Now you could print hello, 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 hello and keep typing that out. You'd get very tired if you had to do it a hundred times or a thousand times. Or, this is pretty amazing, you could just use a loop, which literally you could just put in a number there, like a thousand, and it would produce for you a thousand hellos. And this is using a loop. So this is very extremely useful. You can imagine the different uses for it in programming. Um, say you wanted to make a hundred stars in a, in a video game, you'd use a loop. So let's look at how loops are used and what they are. Now again, think about how we use loops in real life. Say you wanted to tell someone to hit a nail with a hammer and say you needed it done a hundred times. You could say hit the nail once, hit the nail twice, hit the nail and you get the point, it's getting sort of boring and it, it would take a long time. Or you could just say you could define the number of times, the number of loops, so to speak, needed and you just say hit the nail a hundred times. Similarly, say you were telling someone to run and they were following your every instruction. You could say run one step, run two step, run three steps. Or you could just say keep running until I say stop. Now this is really important. Basically, you're making use of what's essentially a loop. And every loop has what's called a stopping condition. We're going to look at some examples in a minute, but just to begin with, see if you can follow where the stopping condition might be. Here's an example of a loop. It says, while the score is greater than 100, keep printing this. Now this is the stopping condition. While the score is greater than 100, keep printing, printing this. So, in other words, the loop would only stop, in other words, the things inside the loop would stop or fail to execute if this condition was met. We'll look at that more closely in a minute as we go through the tasks. We're going to be looking at two different types of loops, the while loop and the for loop. And it's useful for you to know that the while loop is a condition controlled loop. In other words, it has a condition which is at the start and if that condition is met, it will do whatever is inside the loop. The for loop is a count controlled loop. And what that means is it has a known number of iterations or times that you want to loop through. For instance, for i in range 5, it just means it'll start at 0 and end at 4. And you can define when you want it to start and stop. So while loop is a condition controlled loop. And the condition is at the start of the loop. If the condition is met, the code inside the loop will run. When the condition stops being met, the loop will stop, or you can break out of the loop. So have a look at this example. This loop goes, up, goes on forever, and this is similar to one of the tasks you'll be doing in a minute. So you have a score variable which has been set to 500. And then it says, while score is greater than 100, print, you're in a group, you're in a loop, rather. Now, the score is 500, and over here, it's asking the score to go up by 1 every time. What's going to happen? It's going to score, is going to start at 500, it's going to keep going up and up and up and up and up, and it's never going to stop. So really, you need to change the stopping condition and only then this loop will actually stop and function correctly. So let's have a look at how a loop might work. The example that I just gave, I set a score variable and I gave it a value of 100. Then I said, while score, which is the variable which is equal to 100, is greater than 500, Well, so greater than 100 in this case, let's stick to the example that we gave. 
is greater than 100, and it's already 100, then print you are in a loop. And then we're going to make the score keep going up by 1. So in other words, this is the loop. This is the body of the loop, which is indented, which means everything in here is going to be happening while the loop is being asked to run. is greater than 100. So, or I can put equal to 100. And you can see that this loop is just going on and it's going to crash. So if I want this to stop, there's many things I could do. For instance, I could start at zero. Your scores usually begin at zero. And I can say, while the score is less than 10, and we use the same sort of format as we would in an if, we have a, a colon at the end. So we're saying, while the score is less than 10, so it's, it is less than 10, so the loop is going to run, but this time it's only going to run that many times. It's going to stop when this condition is met. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We could change this to 5. So if the score is 5 and the stopping condition is 10, we know that it's only going to run 5 times. Let's have a look at another example. This is also an example from one of the tasks that you're going to look at. Now suppose you were playing a game and you had a variable called gold coins and you had 50 gold coins to start with. Then we create a loop which says while the gold coins are greater than 10, print, you're rich. As you can see, this loop is just going on and on and on. And one of the things that you're going to come to see as you practice while loops is that they, in order for the stopping condition to be met, the variable that you're referring to needs to either go up or down. So at the moment, gold coins is 50. And it's saying, while gold coins is greater than 10. Now, it's always going to be greater than 10 because it's 50. So in order to meet this condition, you actually need the number of gold coins to go down. And exactly as we showed you in the last example, you can actually decrement, which is a big word for saying go down by minus one rather than go up. So let's have a look at what, at what happens. Say I start with 50 gold coins, and then it says while gold coins is greater than 40, which it is, it's 50, print you're rich, and then it keeps going down by minus 1. But obviously, by the time, if it starts at 50 and it keeps going down by minus 1, that's going to only happen 10 times before it reaches the stopping condition. As soon as it reaches the stopping condition, it breaks the loop and the program ends. So to look at that again, this is how a while loop is constructed. I could start with x is equal to 1. And I could say while x is smaller or is less than 10, print, let's just say print x, remember x is 1. And then in a while loop you always have an incrementation or a decrementation so that you can work towards your stopping condition. So in this case if I say x is equal to x plus 1, let's look at what's happening. x is equal to 1 and it says while x is less than 10, it is x is 1, it's less than 10, it prints x. So if you see over here, it's just simply printing the value of x, which is 1. It's then moving on to the next line, where it's saying x should now be equal to x plus 1. In other words, 2. So it goes back to the loop and it checks. Is x less than 10? Well, it is, because x is now 2. Well, print x, and it does. It then, again, increments the value of x, to 3. It checks, is x less than 10? Yes it is, it prints, and it goes on until finally x is equal to 9. 
and then in the, in the last iteration or the last loop round it says x is less than 10 well it's not so it stops and it actually exits the program many of the tasks that you'll look at uh, before you attempt the final challenge are simply seeking for you to understand the logic of while loops and obviously as you delve deeper into python and you go through the solve and learn series you'll become an absolute expert in while loops which is very important because they are key to programming. Do feel free to pause and have a look at some of these slides which contain the answers for the tasks that you're about to, to try. In this case, in order to break out of the loop you need to actually change the boolean value to true. It's worth noting that you can use a while loop and a for loop and you can have exactly the same output. As we mentioned to begin with, loops are used in the real world or actually in programming a lot. You can think about password checking every time you log in. The chances are you have a, something behind the scenes which is using a while loop. And of course there's game design. While loops come into play all the time. You have a main game loop and for instance while a condition is true the game plays etc. So loops are going to be key. Let's see if you can solve these initial challenges and then the final challenge.